In this patient, we are going to demonstrate the harvest of ALD free flap with the musculocutaneous perforator. This is for providing good soft tissue cover on the dorsum of foot and anterior medial aspect of the leg for facilitating tendon reconstruction and foot drop correction. A line is drawn from ASIS to the superior lateral border of the patella and flap is centered around that. This flap is based on the descending branch of lateral circumflex femoral artery. This gives perforators between rectus femoris and vastus lateralis and supply the overlying skin. Sometimes these perforators can also arise from the accessory uh, cutaneous artery which lies either above or below the main descending branch as you are going to see in this patient. The flap is centered around the marking and first the medial inferior and inferior lateral incision is given and the septum between the rectus and vastus is identified. In the upper part of the incision one can identify the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve of thigh which could be used uh, to make the flap the sensate flap. Now we dissect between the rectus femoris and vastus lateralis and this is done in the early stages to avoid confusion with the midline raphae of the bipinnate rectus femoris. As the dissection goes up we can see the perforators the upper and the lower one. The upper one comes from the accessory cutaneous vessel and we start dissecting it. The best way to dissect the perforator is to hold the muscle from the top and gently pass the tenotomy scissor in the avascular plane between the perforator and the muscle and incrementally the muscle can be transected. Once the whole of the muscle on top of the perforator is transected, it is held from both the sides with the help of Babcock forceps and the gentle dissection is performed. Once the top of the perforator is freed, one goes to the side, identifying the side muscular branches and carefully coagulating it. This is done on both the sides. At the same time, the femoral nerve branches could be easily teased off from the muscular pedicle because there is a loose areolar plane between the nerve and the vessels. Thereafter, we enter underneath and like it, the muscular branches below. In this situation, we are doing the pedicle dissection before fully dissecting the flap. Only one major perforator has been identified in this patient. The second perforator has been sacrificed. Now we start dissection from below. Here we needed uh, tensor facial arta for tendon reconstruction, so we are going in a suprafacial plane, elevating the flap from below upwards and as the perforator has already been identified, that is carefully preserved, the skin and subcutaneous tissue is dissected of the tensor facial arta and vastus lateralis muscle. Now the remaining attachment of the perforator to the muscle is being detached and the final attachments underneath are being clipped and transected. It is good to uh, dissect uh, the space between artery and vena committent where the flap is still connected because a good traction is available. We can see that 
artery and vein are separated and the flap is fully dissected. This is the 10th day post-operative view of the patient. Now in the second case we are showing the anterior lateral thigh flap with septocutaneous perforator. This is a girl with calf contour deformity who wanted the correction of the deformity and for which the ALD flap has been marked which is primarily closable with around 8 cm of width and again in this patient as we have described we are going to give a medial incision first and the inferior lateral incision first. This is important because if by chance the perforators are not identified this flap could be converted into a tensor facial order flap. That's why the upper lateral portion is initially kept intact before identification of the perforator. Here again we have identified the space between the rectus femoris and vastus lateralis. The rectus is pulled medially and all the vessels going towards the rectus side are coagulated and we keep on dissecting in the space between these two muscles till we identify the descending branch of the lateral circumflex femoral artery. As we move upwards, we visualize the vessel. Now we can see the vessel and in this particular patient, the perforator is septocutaneous, making the dissection easy. This is the perforator. The perforator is septocutaneous only in a small minority of patients. Almost in around 80 to 85 percent of the patients, we get major musculocutaneous perforators. Now, as we have identified the perforator, we give incision in the upper lateral part. Incise the fat and the tensor facial order. Start dissecting the flap from below, including the facial order. As we go up, we see some minor uh, musculocutaneous perforators, which in this patient are not of a great significance because there is a very good size pulsating septocutaneous perforator in the upper part. The flap is free from the upper part leaving the tensor facial artery muscle behind and all these minor musculocutaneous perforator coming through the vastus lateralis are coagulated. One by one, uh, all these minor perforators are coagulated and transacted. And now we can see the septocutaneous perforator. Around an inch of fascia is preserved around it to prevent kinking. And to prevent traction injury to the flap, the flap is uh, hitched with a Liger clip on top. We cut the facial sheath. which is covering the descending branch of lateral circumflex femoral artery. Carefully create a space between the vessel and the sheet. This is fully dissected. 
in the upper aspect the femoral nerve branches are there which are gently teased out the dissection is done underneath the pedicle the nerve is separated and the extension of the vessel beyond the perforator is clipped and on both sides the perforator leaving around one and a half centimeter of fascia on each side this section is completed in the septocutaneous perforator situation, it is important to mark the pedicle before its division. This helps to identify any twist or kink in the perforator during the flap transfer. You can see that the flap is freed based on the single perforator. The donor site is closed primarily. Here we have identified the posterior tibial vessels and the vena committent. The end to side anastomosis is done after excision of the scar to give this outcome and this is the two week post-op photograph of the patient and this is the comparative photograph. Thank you very much.